Hello students, myself Dr. Pallavi Railavhale and I am teaching you Pharmacognosy 1. So, we are continuing with our unit 1 and the topic which we are going to discuss today is adulteration of drugs of natural origin as well as we will also learn about the organoleptic evaluation of crude drugs today. So, starting with adulteration, what do you mean by adulteration? See what happens that when we take any drug that at that po uh, point of time many times there may be some kind of intentional or unintentional mixing. In layman's language if I speak the milawat, jo milawat hoti hai. so that milawat is nothing but our adulteration and it may be intentional or unintentional. Uh, in other words if I say that if a particular drug is given and the quality of that drug is not maintained due to certain unavoidable reasons at that point of time we will say that the quality of the drug is adulterated. So, if we look at the definition of adulteration it means that a, when we are substituting the original drug partially means in a particular part or wholly with other similar looking substances that is known as adulteration and the substance with which we are doing this mixing it is known as adulterant, it is known as adulterant. So, generally the adulteration is done with such substances which are either of a inferior quality it means lower grade or they may be also having low therapeutic efficacy. But the problem arises in case these in, uh, constituents are poisonous in nature or have very bad uh, effects on the particular physiology of a patient. So, that is why studying the adulteration of crude drugs beco becomes very very important because in natural substances controlling the quality of a particular drug is very very difficult. So, that is why we are learning about adulteration. In another definition we can say that adulteration is the debasement of an article means we are creating a lower grade article which will have the same cost in market, but because of its lower grade the amount of money a manufacturer or a producer is putting in is very less. So, his profit increases ultimately. So, that is why many a times this adulteration is considered to be intentional doing with some reason with a profit uh, intent having profit in your mind. So, that is one definition of adulteration and one more definition says that adulteration is a admixture or a substitution of original or genuine article or drug with an inferior defective or otherwise useless or harmful substances. So, what does inferior means? It is not of the same quality as the main drug. Defective means it has certain problems like it may be some kind of poisonous of some kind of poisonous nature or some other species. So, there may be defective or otherwise it may be useless means just we are giving a, a placebo drug without any actual active ingredient to the patient and he thinks that he is taking the drug. So, it is completely useless in nature or it can be completely harmful substances having many side effects. So, these are the few definitions of adulteration and as we have discussed this part we understand what is the importance of studying this adulteration from pharmacognosy point of view. So, as I told you that adulteration can be deliberate or intentional or it can be accidental or indeliberate. It means deliberate or intentional means that when a person intentionally with a profit intention that if I mix a particular drug for example, if I take the example of asafoetida hing. So, asafoetida is a very expensive drug, asafoetida is a very expensive drug and when this drug it is uh, sold in the market the cost is very very high 
Okay. So, if we are mixing, if a person intends to have more profit from this asafoetida, what he can do simply that he can add either starch powder or some, uh, some kind of such white looking powder into the asafoetida mixture and he will do the adulteration. So, as such as a, uh, starch costs very less, but, as, but uh, asafoetida costs very high. So, indirectly he is gaining out of, uh, profit out of it. So, that is what is known as intentional uh, adulteration. The second one is which is rare and though it can occur very frequently, but however, if a proper uh, guidelines is fol followed, if proper GAP is followed, then we can control this second type of adulteration which is known as accidental or indeliberate adulteration. So, what is accidental ad adulteration means while doing the cultivation or collection or processing due to uh, you can say less knowledge or by mistake if any kind of adulteration happens that is known as accidental adulteration. I will give you one example for example, digitalis. So, we know now that digitalis leaves are used as a drug. But if a person unintentionally while plucking the digitalis leaves, he plucks few other leaves which are looking same like digitalis, then at that time we can say that this is accidental adulteration. He did not know that this is not digitalis leaf and unintentionally he has collected it or for that matter if we see that if it is a digitalis plant and along with the leaves if the stem part is coming along with the drug. So, that is also again a type of a accidental adulteration. Now, what are the reasons? We have discussed many reasons. The first reason is scarcity of drug. For example, saffron, kesar. In India, kesar is produced only in Kashmir because this uh, kesar flower, it requires a particular temperature and environment for its cultivation. So, we cannot cultivate in the, uh, in the entire country, that is the reason the produce is less. So, it is scarce in nature and this scarcity increases the cost of saffron. So, what do people do? People first extract out the color of the saffron. Okay, saffron are nothing but the filaments of the flower, the anther part of the flower that is the kesar. Okay. So, what do people do? First, they extract out the color, orange color of kesar and then the leaf strands which are sorry, the flower strands which are remaining, the anthers which are remaining, they are as it is uh, you can say adulterated and sold. If you try to uh, take color out of this kesar, it will not give any kind of color or flavor because it has already been used up. Okay. So, this is a you can say because it is scarce in nature, people start adulterating this saffron. The second point is the high price of the drug in market. For example, clove, cinnamon, cardamom. We know that these spices uh, that is clove, clove means long, cinnamon means dalcini and cardamom means uh, elaichi. So, these three drugs, they are very, very expensive drugs uh, uh, because first of all market has lot of demand for these things. We use it in spices, we use it as formulations, many places it is used as a flavoring agent. So, because of these requirements, the cost increases. So, this is high demand, this is high demand. This is low supply. Now, the third point is that there are few drugs which are contraband means there are ban on the production of certain drugs. For example, opium. So, opium it is, it is controlled under the government, the production as well as sell of opium is controlled under the Narcotics and Psychotropics Drug Substances Act. 1985. Okay. So, because of that nobody can directly start cultivating opium or uh, selling opium, it is under control. So, because it is contraband, in India only two districts, one in UP and one in MP. In UP, uh, it is Ghazipur and in MP, it is Neemach. Only in do these two regions, the cultivation and production as well as manufacturing of opium alkaloids is allowed. 
So, because they have you can say limited the production or manufacture or, or manufacture of these narcotic substances, people start doing adulteration by that thing in mind that because there is scarcity, government control is there, why not to start adulterating it and selling it in some other way. So, these are the reasons for adulteration. Now, we will discuss few uh, terminologies. So, the terminology here first is inferiority. If your natural drug, it is uh, uh, if the particular main drug is replaced with a substandard drug which looks similar in the appearance. Appearance wise it looks the same, but actually it is a inferior quality substandard quality drug. In that case we call it as a inferiority. Then what is spoilage? Spoilage means we if we have a particular uh, condition where our normal drug is infested infested by certain microbial growth like if you have not dried the drug nicely. So, what will happen microbes start attacking the drug and they start degrading the main chemical constituents because of which the drug becomes a lower grade or we can call it that, that the spoilage has taken place. Then deterioration. Deterioration and spoilage are similar uh, to a certain extent. Deterioration is again the impairment of the quality or value of an article due to destruction or abstraction of valuable constituents. To bad treatment or aging or to the deliberate extraction of the constituents and the sale of residue in the original drugs. What is admixture? Add mixture is addition of one article to the another article either intentionally or due to ignorance or accidentally. So, admixture means that without uh, you can say uh, what we do is we take the main drug in that main drug we are mixing certain things to increase its uh, you can say value at the same time in the sense increasing its cost profit not the value, but the profit. For example, in old times what used to happen that people used to buy the grains and along with grains there used to be many stones in those grains. So, many times those stones used to be added intentionally. I am talking about the minor small uh, gravel uh, stones, very small ones which used to be added like the, uh, the we used to call them kankar. So, they used to uh, be added in the grains intentionally to increase the weight of the grains. Then sophistication. So, sophistication is what? Sophistication is when we do a deliberate adulteration, we intentionally do a deliberation and we mix certain important ingredients uh, you can say uh, which look exactly same as our original drug. Okay. So, it looks like the original drug, but it is actually something else. For example, if we take the powdered ginger, powdered ginger, powdered ginger is expensive, but if we are mixing it with starch, if we cannot differentiate between the actual ginger and the uh, admixture or the you can say adulterated ginger. So, when properly by understanding that what is the basic uh, you can say um, uh, organoleptic uh, feature of a particular drug and we are mixing a substance which looks exactly like it, we call it sophistication. Then substitution, substitution is the addition of entirely different article in place of the what is required. Many people consider substitution is not a type of adulteration. Why? Because they feel that if one drug is not available, why not substitute with other uh, available drug. So, that is substitution and it may be acceptable at times. However, if we are substituting it with a lower quality substance, then it becomes adulteration. For example, if we supply cotton seed oil in place of olive oil. So, olive oil is very expensive and its medicinal properties are different, while cotton seed oil is considered to be a cheap quality oil and its properties are totally different. So, these were few terminologies which we discussed related to adulteration and now uh, we will see what are the types of adulteration or substitution of herbal drugs. The first one is when we use uh, inferior commercial varieties. Inferior commercial varieties means that it belongs to the same genus probably, but the species is different and the species which has been used for adulteration is of lower grade and does not have the same therapeutic 
value. For example, the Arabian Senna that is Cassia angustifolia is basically adulterated by dog Senna or it can also be used, uh, it can also be adulterated by Cassia Senna. So, dog Senna and Cassia Senna, they are the inferior quality Senna and they are used to adulterate the official Senna that is Arabian Senna. We also have another variety known as the Tinne Valley Senna and that can also be adulterated by dog Senna. Another example is the official ginger that is ginger officinalis that ginger is adulterated by the Japanese ginger which is you can say a lower quality known as ginger mayoga. So, it can be adulterated by ginger mayoga. The second way in which the adulteration can be done artificially uh, by using certain ingredients which are artificial in nature, which are not natural. The examples for this is if we are adding invert sugar to honey. Honey is a naturally produced uh, substance, but when we are adding invert sugar intentionally to it, it becomes a adulteration. So, that is artificial invert sugar. Then if we are adding paraffin wax to beeswax, beeswax is a naturally obtained substance from the beehives and it has its own you can say good properties in preparing ointments etcetera. But because it is expensive in nature, many times paraffin wax is used, paraffin wax is obtained from crude petroleum. So, that paraffin wax which is of very lower quality that is used to uh, adulterate the beeswax. Then substitution by exhausted drugs, what happens is that for example, if I take coriander or fennel, fennel means soft or clove means long. So, these drugs are volatile oil containing drugs and their oils are also uh, required in market in the same amount. So, many times what is done that these drugs in their intact form without making their powder, in their intact form they are used for production of volatile oils. So, what happens that the volatile oil is completely extracted, but the intact drug means that particular clove it remains in the same shape and same form and same color, but its volatile oil is lost. So, the main medicinal ingredient is lost, but because it looks the same like the original clove that is used for adulteration and we call them the exhausted drugs. Such drugs from which the active ingredient has been extracted out, but it is remaining in, uh, in the same you can say appearance is the same. At that time if we are adulterating we call it substitution by exhausted drugs. Then substitution by superficially similar, but cheaper natural substances. There are few drugs for example, the belladonna, senna, mint. Now, these are very very important herbal drugs and their leaves are generally used as the active ingredients. Now, if these leafy drugs are replaced by any kind of normally you can say easily available leaves like the alanthus leaf, then this kind of adulteration comes under this category where they look they look very much similar in appearance because of which we are doing the adulteration. Then adulteration by addition of worthless heavy metals. Now, this is a very wrong practice and it has been observed that for opium generally lead shot has been used in past for adulteration. Limestone has been used in asaphoetida and stones are mixed with the lycoris roots. So, these are very very you can say wrong practices where the weight of these drugs is increased by addition of such heavy metals like the uh, limestones or the lead shots. Then addition of synthetic principles, many times synthetic substances can be added for example, citral, citral is having the flavor of lemon oil. So, it is generally added externally to a particular oil and a person will feel that this is the pure lemon oil, but it is mixture of two chemicals and not a naturally manufactured lemon oil. Same way benzyl benzoate, this is generally found in, uh, it is uh, benzyl benzoate is generally found in Loban. Loban means the, uh, uh, it, is, uh, it is basically a main constituent of the benzoins 
okay so in benzoins the use is as a flavoring agent and an expectorant so these benzyl benzoate can be added externally into the benzoin to increase its value or it can also be added to the other benzoins like the balsam of peru or balsam of tolu then usage of vegetative matter from the same plant if this is generally a uh, you can say unintentional adulteration generally like if we take the barks of many plants like cascara cinchona on the barks of many trees many other plants like liverworts etc or epiphytes may grow so in case a person is removing the bark so along with the bark these epiphytes or liverworts also come along and this becomes a type of adulteration so till now we discussed regarding all the different types of adulterations and now we will move to the organoleptic evaluation of this natural drugs so uh, the natural drugs can be evaluated in different patterns but the foremost type of evaluation is when we look at the drug we try to identify the drug and study its botanical features color size shape etc and the name organoleptic means when we are using our organs sense organs to study a particular drug so in the sense organs the main sense or organs i would mention are our eyes uh, the taste as well as the smell okay because drug uh, we don't uh, go uh, uh, with the other and uh, is also the touch okay so touching the drug smelling the drug tasting the drug and looking at the drug what are the actual features which we are going to observe that is that they are known as the organoleptic features and when we evaluate a particular drug based on these features we call it organoleptic evaluation so here there are few examples of a plant drug if a if a drug is a plant then it may be available to us in either in the form of a bark or a underground rhizome or leaf or flower or fruit or seed or resin or as a wood or as a gum or as a entire drug so we have a very different different kinds of drugs available with us from digitalis saffron phenyl nuxvomica asafoetida so all these drugs when we look at a particular drug if you get a sandalwood uh, wood okay now you know that the wood of a sandalwood will be used as a drug and not the leaf so that information should be there with a particular pharmacognosist that which part of a particular plant is actually medicinal in nature and after knowing that only he can pick up a particular part of that plant and start studying that yes if i have a licorice root with me or stem with me i can study this drug now okay so that is how first of all we should upgrade our knowledge in terms that which part of a particular drug is used as a Uh, active ingredient then now if we look at the different sense organs as i told you that we have the taste odor color texture or feel and shape size etc of a particular drug we can explain the organoleptic features of that particular drug so here we have taken few example for taste if you taste any substance it may either be sour if it is sour generally we call it acidic taste if it is sweet it will generally have sugars or saccharin in it for example uh, licorice or muleti is very very sweet in nature then it may be salty or saline in nature it may be alkaline to some extent in nature or it may be bitter also many of the drugs like saponin glycosides alkaloids they are bitter in nature many a times it can be tasteless or it can be you can say bland bland means very slight taste generally the mucilaginous drugs like carbohydrates where we have polysaccharides where there we have a bland taste you don't have actual uh, you can say you cannot call it completely tasteless but you have a light slight mucilaginous taste in your tongue so these are few distinct sensations or distinct taste which our tongue feels and we can note it down and that becomes a identifying character for that particular drug then uh, generally if you are uh, basically if a person is feeling that the drug is uh, very very soft to touch or it is mucilaginous to touch he will note it that the 
uh, the feeling when we are touching this particular drug. Uh, at that time, uh, we can say that yes, this drug is uh, oily in nature or it has a it has a mucilaginous origin. If the drug tastes astringent, means it may be containing tannins. If the drug is pungent, means it is calling a burning sensation in the mouth, then we call it basically uh, uh, we call it pungent in nature or warm sensation in the tongue. Example is ginger. It can be acrid, means slight irritant action is there, and the example for that is aconite, or it can be nauseous, like it gives the feeling of vomiting. Okay, for example, ipecac, which is a emetic drug itself. Then we have different odors, like a drug can be aromatic, characteristic, balsamic, like the benzoin or loban. Then spicy aroma can also be there. For example, like coriander, it has a spicy aroma. Then unpleasant, we may not not like a particular drug uh, odor. Then it is uh, it is known as unpleasant odor. Then we have different different colors depending upon which drug we are using. We can define that this drug is having this particular color, color like fennel. If it can be pale brown color, it can be light green in color, it can be pale green in color. So we have different different colors also if a particular species is there. For example, cinchona bark will is always considered to be dark reddish brown in color. If you get a sample of brown color bark, you can say that this may not be a cinchona bark. And then we come to the shape and sizes, flowers, leaves, leaflets, bark, all of them have definite features and structures which have to be studied nicely and understood nicely after which we can describe them and elaborate on them that whether this drug is our actual drug or not. So, a lot of you can say morphological studies, botanical studies need to be performed in order to perform the organoleptic evaluation. So, with this we end our uh, lecture for today. Thank you very much.